Can I tell you how my iPad broke? A fisting accident. There's the answer. Okay. So yeah, we're going to do a shirtless pod, but Monet does not want to do it. I mean, you could do I'm not stopping you. I would love you to do it. No, I said I want us together. But, so, well, so, I, I want to be sipping on that solidarity. But I said no, so you can do it by yourself. I know. I, I'm just recounting what you said. All I said, all I said was money. I went to the shirtless pod when I said no. I'm, I didn't say. I didn't. Okay, I would like. Extra. I would like you to be shirtless on this podcast. Can you do that for me? Um, I'll do it when we're both together. At one point, we'll both do our shirtless pod. Let's do it in our underwear. I'm in my underwear. Me too. I'm actually not wearing pants. Yeah, I, I fully have a thong on. Um, so I started. Macaroni I think I'm starting cheese. that. How are you today? I, I think I'm starting that OnlyFans. I took the first steps. What's the, what? What are the, what? Are the, what you mean? Making an account? Yeah. What are you gonna put on there? Y'all just have to find out. I'm gonna on my on my 38th birthday. I'm gonna post. I'm gonna open my OnlyFans. How old are you? 33. You, you, bitch, you think we're gonna be checking out in five years? Yes, that's what Bad Baby did. We, we want, we want instant gratification, instant. No, oh, damn, instant. We want it now. I know what I want, and I want it now. Uh. um, Roberta, I have a secret OnlyFans. I have a secret OnlyFans because you, you know you sign up for OnlyFans through your Twitter account, and then it makes your account your thing. So for a second. I would follow someone and they'd be like, Bob. Oh, no, really? Mine, I don't think mine ever did that. I did it like through the website. I never did it through Twitter. I signed up because you know, you, you go to they, they, like sign up through Google. So you just, it, basically, you don't have to make up a new password. So I just click sign up through Twitter. And girl, for the first two, three people I signed up, they were like, Bob, hey, Bob, hey, Bob. I was like, y'all, I don't need y'all in my business like this. <laughs> I can't. So I had, to, I had to make a little, a, a little super sneaky secret, link. Uh, celebrity Twitter. Super celebrity, secret celebrity Twitter. drag race Twitter. I mean, OnlyFans. No, I was making a joke about a super secret celebrity. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, OnlyFans, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Who are you rooting for on super secret celebrity? Are, 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 are you, you all, Do you all keep accidentally dressing in the same look every week? Is this like coincidental? That is completely coincidental. That's the Isn't that crazy? Like it's crazy. I was like, the synergy is synergizing. <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast? Who are you rooting for? I had Taco Bell and you had tuna. Oh, how'd you know that? Did I tell you that? Oh my god, we're so synergistic. Well, I wanted to do a mukbang with Monet. My food showed up right when Monet, like as as we were sitting down, it was like knock knock, your food's here. And then I was like, I was like, you know what? Let's take fifteen because we don't want a recount of the Wait, last time. Second. Sorry, hold on one second. Hey, Layla, we're doing a podcast. What's up? Oh, I was just saying, am I doing your makeup today? Um, no, it's fine. I'll do it. Do you want me to like do like finishing touches or anything? Yeah, you can do that. That sounds great. Okay, cool. Call me, call me after then. All right, peace. Bye, bitch. We're going to the Emmys today. Put your put we're, your phone on. Do not disturb. Say, put your phone on. Do not disturb. No, we are uh the we're here uh cast is. Oh Jesus. The, what well, is going found, on over we there? Found your replacement also. We found your replacement. I can't really see. It's like very blurry. It's just the guy with a big old booty. I'm on booty TikTok because I love booties, like big and low. I do like low booties. I also like big booties, slim slim thicks. I'm on TikTok. I have not been on TikTok in a very long time. I think a lot of the TikTokers got banned. You can't really, you're not really, they, like they're, a lot of them are getting shut down. But yet, but yet people can just throw their asses around work. Well, their asses are completely covered. They're just moving them around. Their dicks are completely I mean, the covered. Are they're covered. just moving them around. But, <laughs> but, butts, but butts tend to be more acceptable in clothing than a VPL. But we are not here to discuss. This is not something rivalry. We are here to discuss the um, graduation, the, <laughs> sorry, the draguation speeches. What's so funny? What? Okay, I'm gonna try to. Oh, we are. We we're here doing. <laughs> I don't get it. What's so? Do you get what she's laughing, Jacob? What are you laughing about? I'm gonna try my best to take this seriously. Um, in light of recent events, we are here to discuss. Oh. 
Uh, well, man, <laughs> episode so five. Oh, you are messy. <laughs> How am I messy? I want to. I mean, we are here to discuss All Stars Five. This is so exciting. I mean, All Star Seven. Yes, episode honey. Five. All Star Seven, <laughs> honey. She's serving papers. I'm <laughs> Welcome to the stage. Welcome to the stage. Lee, Lee Titches. <laughs> you started this. You're messy. You're so messy. I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna just ease into this. <laughs> I'm not messy. Okay. Okay. Woo. All right. So Monet comes in. Uh, did you intentionally put the tissue, that tissue on your shoe? I did not. I swear, I did not. I did not intentionally put that on my shoe. I literally had no idea it was there because people think I was. I was not doing a thing. I was very upset that I was blocked. I was offended. I took it personally. Well, I, I can imagine. I mean, I think everyone. Yeah, that's pretty clear. I mean, I think Trinity was the most upset about being blocked throughout the season. I can't remember yet. Maybe Trinity. Maybe Viv got pretty mad when she got blocked too. But Trinity was Viv was mad. Hot. Viv was mad when she was blocked. Upset. Um, but I was like, Monet's doing a thing. Monet put that tissue paper on her shoe to do a thing. No, it really happened that way. And I think like they, 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 I think they told me right before I walked in, but I was just like, we'll leave it there. But I did not like put it there. Okay. I just don't understand why after discussing a block, why Viv, after blocking you, why she decided to announce to the room that she was also thinking about, but like, and, and, and just so you, and all right, Mike. No, I'm kidding. She's like, and I was going to block one other, one other person, but she wasn't up for, she wasn't uh, eligible. That's not a, um, uh, yeah, she like, she like, she like, she like, she like, girl, you not, know, it's not a Liverpoolian accent, it's not a she, Scouse accent. She was like, girl, you know, I was going to block someone else, but she wasn't up for elimination. Um, and I think now she's Irish. I know, I don't know. I anyway, got, I got I, very blue hydrangea. Why would she say that? Like, like, bitch. Why of all? Why was she? And then also you and you and you and uh, Trini were like, "Well, are you gonna are you gonna like what if she blocks you now?" And she's like, "She won't get the chance." Well, that didn't age well, <laughs> 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 bitch. Within the same episode, the lie detector determined that was a lie. Well, I think that what it is is that uh, like British folk, like we are just innately truthful like we're very honest i think the viv just wants to be very forthcoming about how she feels about the blocking and i think that's what it is and also but no to, to, be, and to, to be to be honest i think viv is just very green when it comes to not drag race obviously she did a whole season she won but i think the viv is just like she's trying to play a really honest game and be like i want to block someone else but she, and i don't know i just think the viv is just being very honest yeah that's clear <laughs> i just don't understand why because she didn't think what I can't. She, she probably thought she would never end up in the like she she probably see, uh, genuinely thought that Jinx would never have a chance to block her because she was like oh from this point on I'm riding high birds flying high you know how I feel she was like she would never have the chance and then she gagged she thought she thought she thought she about to bend to La Creme being the top every week probably I think so Viv is also Viv is very talented and she's very sure of her talents rightfully so she is so yeah no she of course she is but the difference between Viv. On All Stars, whatever, and, and All Star Seven and Ben Lacrim, the competition is different. You know, I mean, Viv is competing against all winners, and Ben Lacrim is competing against a bunch of fucking losers. Oh my God, uh, you are so and ridiculous. BB. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, BB called me. Like, I need to call her back. Sorry, yes. she's to me. Abs oh, if you do not call back BB, you will be on her. No good list. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, RuPaul is really... RuPaul is wearing a blazer vest, some elbow-length gloves. Opera gloves, yeah. Gold lame harem pants. The glasses. And uh, glasses and some uh, some rain boots. This look is... is I'm kind of living, but I'm kind of like, what is going on? Did you see the meme when, when this when this first came out? People were, um, people were taking a picture of that, of us look, reacting to Rue, and they were like, wow, the real acting challenge of All-Star 7. Because <laughs> he came and we were all like, work! <laughs> so there's no mini challenge this week at all. Which you you um, you love you hate just... you hate mini challenges. Papa's like so I don't I don't like the fucking mini challenges. They just take up space. 
Well, yeah, that's true. Some of them I don't like. Some of them, every once in a while, I like the reading challenge. I like the puppet challenge. I like the mainstays, but I don't like when when you have to like walk an egg on a spoon. Across, <laughs> I don't. I like. I like when they. I like when they hump the. Uh, when they oh, pop yeah, the balloons. Fun. I love that. We're that gonna get to that episode. Anyway, I was very upset about that when we we would get there in episode eight, but I was very upset. I will. I guess we'll find out when we get to the episode. Um, but anyway, um, so the, instead of in no man challenge, RuPaul just decides that Monet gets to um, because, because Monet's block. blocked, mm-hmm. she gets to decide the order of the show. And um, were you were you being were you because Viv thinks Viv thinks you put her last because she blocked you. Is oh, yes. True? I was completely strategic in how I did it. The only person that got preferential treatment from me was Trinity because of our alliance. And everyone else was, I strategically put them where they were. 1,000%. 1,050%. What, what was the point of putting Jinx, what, what was the point of putting Jinx second to last? Was it to fuck Viv over? Yeah, I put, I put Viv after Jinx because I knew that Jinx would be strong. So I wanted Jinx's, I wanted Jinx to do really well that it would overshadow Viv. Like if Vivian did anything less than good, or like, well, it would have fucked her up with the judges, with the judging. And it's all I, been just to sabotage the Viv. Well, not just her, other people too. Like who else? Um, I put, and then, and then, but I put Viv and Jinx, I kind of worked together because I thought that if Jinx wasn't, didn't do well, Viv would have been so fucking good. It would have made Jinx's performance look bad too. So I, I, I strategically put everyone that way. Okay. And what, what what was what the hell was Trinity sewing? Like this is not a sewing challenge. Why is this bitch sewing? She didn't. Why are we looking she, up? And she she didn't come with her cap and gown look. She made her cap and gown look there. Everyone else came with theirs. She made hers in the workroom. The mo heart of this season. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is Trinity is a really good seamstress. Trinity can really. She, <laughs> that's not shade. Bob, put your fucking pop your eyes back in the back into into your fucking skull. Trinity is a very good like Trinity can make like ga- like Trinity is really good as we can see in the construction challenges. What about what about Mo? I would say Mo Hart is a decent. I mean, Mo- Monique doesn't call herself a seamstress. She can sew adequately, but she's not a seamstress. Oh, no. I'm being silly. I know. I will say this uh, on this last flight uh, to New Jersey. I w- I listened to both of Mo Hart's albums. They are very good. Mm-hmm. Mo Hart is a great musician. They're a little Jesusy. They are they are they are a little heavy. On the religion for me, it's almost but like AA. That being, I'm kidding. That AA is not religious. AA I know. Is not a religious I know. I'm institution. kidding. I know. Um, but this is it is a, there. It is very Jesusy music. But I, I also like gospel music. And if you all have not listened to Mo Hearts to um, she has an EP and an album. I really recommend. It. They are very very good. Yeah, Monique's a great singer. Um. Did you, Pat? I wish I could find a show to you. There is this meme of this designer, and they were flying from like New York to LA to sew a garment. This motherfucker pulls, he takes out his sewing machine. He's sitting in main cabin. You know how they have uh, two seats, three seats in the middle, two seats on the side? He's in the three in the middle, in the middle seat. He pulls out his sewing machine, takes out his fucking tray, and is sewing a garment in the plane in his seat. And the, and the people around him are like, like so irritated. I'm like, that is the kind of <laughs> devotion I want from my designer. This motherfucker is sewing a gown bob on the plane. This is a real video. I need to find it to show you. I was gagged. You know who that is? Girl. You know who that is? Girl. Girl. <laughs> Girl. Um <laughs> anyway. Okay, by the way, you know, I don't know that I bitch, I might never fly first class ever again. Why? I might never fly first class again. Why? Girl, I flew uh main cabin back to LA. I was so comfortable. I was so I was so more comfortable than first class. Comfortable. Yeah, okay, first of all, there was no one back there. I had an entire row to myself. I had more space back there than I would have had in first class. Bitch, I had a whole there was a whole row. Do you know how much a first class ticket was? How much? Forty three hundred dollars. What? From you know how much? From from Newark you know how, to L A. Newark to L A. Do you know how much a uh, a a uh, main cabin ticket was? Uh, how much? Four hundred thirty dollars. Bitch, I saved practically four thousand dollars. Thirty nine hundred dollars. 
But also, you're forgetting this. You also, the chances are that every time you fly, there will be no one next to you are slim to none. And um, B, if I have, I have flown back there before, when I tell you, if you get on a busy flight, your six foot two ass will feel like a goddamn, uh, I don't even know what you will, you'll be sitting back there. Because also when you're in the last one, your seat can't go back, but everyone else's can. So everyone else is reclining and you're just sitting there like, you cannot breathe. It has been, and also I have bad knees. Well, too. also if you're in the first seat, you don't have that, if you're in seat one, you don't have that under, ch- under oh, the yeah. chair leg room. Yeah. And you have to put your bags up. You can't put your bags under the chair in front of you. And I mean, I, I once flew first. I once flew main cabin all the way to Australia for thirty six hours. That was I, bitch. They got me too on my first ever trip to Australia. And I, and you know, and I made it. And I was like, you know what? I'm here. But I, I flew. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to my brother's wedding in October, and I'm gonna, um, I'm not wasting money on a first class ticket. I'm just gonna get a main cabin ticket. Work. But also, when you, uh, I'm when the Bernie Sanders. I'm the Bernie Sanders of drag. I like to see it. I want to. We, we want. We want. We want. We want. We want documented ocular proof of you flying main cabin to Justin's wedding. We want to see it. We want to see well, the I still, girl, I still have my ticket. Me and seat for uh, uh, 374 uh-huh. row Z. Not that one. We want to see the one to Atlanta to, to Justin's wedding. That's the one we want to see. That's what we want to see. Well, we'll see. Now mm-hmm. let's go back to. Uh, we'll see. Sorry, we are talking we'll about see. RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh All shit! Stars, now my camera's uh, all blurry. Hold on. Not the titty shot. <laughs> some of the patrons want to start a GoFundMe to give you some titties. Wait, is that a real thing? It's not. It's just one person said it. Also, do not Monet. If Monet wants titties, she can afford them. Do not. Do not buy Monet no titties. Mind your fucking business. If Monet, if Mind Mo, your fucking business. If Monet wants titties. Y- y'all save y'all money for what you need. Save y'all get get someone else uh, gender affirming surgery. Monet can afford hers, honey. Um. So wait. So so. Okay. Oh my god! I didn't, I didn't got all. Um. <laughs> is the workroom really? Is, was it really that hard to uh, work in there? Because if Shay, it seemed like y'all were just singing, xylophoning. There was a ukulele came out at one point in time, well, and Shay is just like. Jinx and that fucking ukulele was oh she was always ukuleleing she was always bing bang bong same sang always playing something Jada when she gave after she gave Viv that fucking xylophone in the last lip sync Jada would just have this xylophone just always in, just randomly bring it out and dun, 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 dun. it was so it, it for me I can work in noise I don't know if you how do you feel about this I am very good at working in noise I don't know if it's because I grew up in New York or because I lived you know. I noise doesn't bother me. Noise doesn't bother me to sleep. Noise doesn't bother me to concentrate. Like generally, I mean, if it's like obnoxiously loud, like someone with a fucking what you call this, a jackhammer, a jackhammer, like out, like right in front, like that's one thing. But if it's like just random noise, I can I can deal with that. It doesn't bother me. You remember footage of Darian Lake using a jackhammer in slow motion? Her titties are bouncing. You are so random. You remember have, this? Have have I have was, I? Uh, you're just talking about jackhammers. It's not random. You're just talking about jackhammers. Oh, but this actually happened? Or you said, can, have I ever imagined? It was on It was on the season six promo, and she's using a jackhammer in slow motion. Her titties are like, Shh. Darian has great tits. You remember this? I don't remember. <clears throat> anyway. Can you work in noise? Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I can, noise doesn't bother me that much. I, I can sleep in the noisiest of places. I can, yeah. I mean, it's, I, maybe it's New York City for 12 years. Maybe it's uh, coming from, you know. Columbus, a Georgia loud household. Um, Columbus isn't that loud. Columbus is, you know, That's, when I went there it was pretty loud. You have never been to Columbus, Georgia. I have. I have. Well, that, that, one. They, never one year, one. the one year I lived in Gwinnett County, we took a field trip to Columbus to go to um the state fair. You are lying. You are lying. The state fair. You are. You know, the, you know, you know why they call it the state fair because it travels all around the state. Right, so you and that to go year to it was in the Columbus. State fair. You could, no, it travels around the state throughout the year, so you can get the state fair up in Gwinnett. So why would you chase the state fair down to Gwinnett? Because in the school down to Columbus, because how it worked in the school year, it just lined up that when it was our spring break, that's when it was time to go to the Gwinnett County. I mean, to the Columbus State. And fair. where and where was and where was the state fair? On where um, was it? it was on Decab and Mason, I think. <laughs> no, up. sorry, sorry, no, 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 no. It was, it was on, it was on Buena Vista, and um, Decab Avenue, I believe. Absolutely not. It's at the Coliseum. The State Fair is in the parking lot. Once you're headed toward Phoenix City, Alabama, right before you go over the bridge, 
to the left, you will see the state fair. And then, but then if you go under the bridge to the underpass, then that's where the, the school bus parked and we went to the fair. And, under the under the, under the Chattahoochee River? Yeah, we went we went we took the little road that takes you up <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> under the Chattahoochee. Y'all went damn. Y'all went under the Chattahoochee. That is crazy. Uh, honey, they, I didn't uh, even know they had built a tunnel under the Chattahoochee. Uh, honey, they they call my our teacher the, the the Miss Frizzle of teachers, honey. She was really creative. She would get us anywhere we needed to go. This guy online said Miss Frizzle could only teach uh science. Imagine if kids were like, What was slavery like? To the bus. <laughs> So what were the what were the who were the Nazis to the bus? Oh my god, that is hilarious. <laughs> That's not on TikTok. That's not my joke. I saw it on TikTok. That is hilarious. Right. Oh my god, we we are not talking about the show. All right, so we, we, um, bitch, I, I, I wonder why. We, we, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm glad we're taking this as well as we are. All right, I am too. So, do uh, do you you're you're talking about how you want to write well, like write well this episode? Um, I feel like you know, in my head, I'm like, if I was blocked, I wouldn't care. Yeah, but you can because still, you can't win. Oh, yeah, but you can still get ten thousand dollars to lip sync though. Then you can block someone too. Oh, you can block someone. Yeah, so it it it, it does matter for sure. Yeah, that's true. And 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 also, and in the grand scheme of even public perception, right? You, you the goal is even though you're blocked, you still want to do good because people are still consuming the show and it's still showing your talent as a writer, as a comedian. So you still behoove you to do well. Yeah, uh, you all do a little session with Carson Kressley and Nikki Glaser. I you love Nikki Glaser. Glazer. Oh my god, yes, I love Nikki Glaser. She's so I watch a lot of the roasts on Comedy Central. I love them. They're so good. I started watching them from the Justin Bieber roast, and I've seen um a bunch of them. And um, Nikki Glaser, she's an she she's a very she's a very filthy comic in the in the roast, but also outside of that, she she makes like a lot of like sex Is jokes. She, Good. She, she's yeah. Even outside of the roast, she's disgusting. She's filthy. She's yeah, repulsive, like, right? Oh my God! You're trying to do a thing. I can't. Is that, is that what you're saying? Anyway, Nikki Glazer. So I was I'm trying to piggyback of, on what you were saying. I'm a big fan of hers. If y'all want to watch some of her stuff, just type in, just go on YouTube and type in Nikki Glazer roast, and her jokes are always very cutting. We should get Nikki on the podcast. I would love to have Nikki. I'm sure she would do it. I want Leslie on the podcast too. Leslie Jones or Leslie Jordan? Leslie uh, Jones. Okay. Yeah. 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 We we'll talk about ladies and comedy. Oh yeah, that'll be actually really fun. I would love to have Leslie Jones on here. I love her. She's, I she's great. Love Leslie Jones. Um, and, and a few people, uh, Viv and Raja decided to go with these characters. And Jinx says she's doing. I mean, we'll get to Jinx's thing in a second, but um, Viv and Raja decided they're going to go with characters, which I think was actually a pretty strong choice. A high risk, but a high yield too. Yeah, yeah. I really, I, I, I really enjoyed. Well, we'll get to the ones we enjoyed. Um, I when we, we, like Nikki and Carson don't get Raja's bit. Like as as Nikki and Carson are watching Raja, it's like they don't get it. They, but maybe Raja hadn't. But also, you all you all hadn't really had a lot of time to write. Like you had. It's not like y'all y'all like were given the challenge and like twenty minutes later we're in front of how how long? Actually, I don't know how long was it. Between? In real you no, know, in real time, it's probably like about about an hour or two hours. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still not enough to have. I guess it isn't. I mean, this is this is as much as you're gonna get. You know, to get like, I like rough, I want to be able to s- to get rough ideas, though. You know what I mean? So then, so then you have that night to kind of go over it and flesh it out. Yeah. Um. So let's go to the to the to the challenge. I really just feel. I know. I know. I know. COVID. But like, I really would like there to be an audience. Like, it, I'm. I'm. It's hard. It, it's so hard to keep watching for like. I think four seasons now. People performing for no one. It yeah. is getting wild. It's very annoying. Anyway, hold on one second. I'm going to go get mine. Hold on. What, what, what did you go get? What did you just go get? I got uh, my my full speech. Oh, your speech. Yeah. Oh, okay. You want to do the whole speech? Uh, sure. Please welcome Sum- Someone Comes Loudly, Monet Exchange. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you to the students, parents, and faculty for having me. As you all know, my name is Monet Exchange, and it truly is an honor to stand here before you at a dainty 5'12 to uplift, inspire, 
and perspire in front of each and every one of you. Looking out at you beautiful grads, I'm not really sure why I was asked to be here today. Perhaps it was my sickening fashions on season 10, my ability to tie for a win in All-Stars 4, or maybe just all this ass. <laughs> Either way, I want to share with you all some words of wisdom for this next chapter in your life. Today marks your graduation and a commitment to take your fist, I mean, first, I'm used to saying that word, oh, uh, I mean, first, I'm used to saying the, the other word, first real steps out into the world where you'll encounter many situations that compel you to ask yourself, am I doing this right? Did I choose the right career? Should I have let the entire football team spit roast me again? Yes. The answer is always yes. Know that your labor is not in vain, and as long as you operate in love and lead with foreskin, I mean kindness, yeah, kindness, or what I'm still trying to teach Trinity, you're doing it right. Perfection is unattainable, and failure is inevitable. But you can't fear either. God knows Carson doesn't. I'm not going to lie to you. I know failure is scary, but it's not defeat. It's not the end. It's really just Michelle Fassage pushing you in a new direction and telling you, no. The sooner you realize this, the more you'll see that these imperfect failures are the quirks and flaws that make you you. They wouldn't make you great. Unless your, quirk, unless your quirk is blocking me if you win the challenge, then that's just fucking stupid. When I graduated college, I can honestly stand here and admit to each and every one of you that I was afraid. I was afraid to let the world at large see me for who I was. I was afraid that my quirks would out me. I was afraid that those same quirks would be my downfall and ultimately be the recipe for my demise. But I'm here to say, so what? So what you're loud? So what you stutter? So what you're poor? So what you're queer? So what you're black? When life is giving you it, when life is giving it to you hard, grit your teeth, sniff some papas, and you take it. Learn and embrace these treasures about you because full tea, they're the reasons why I'm standing before you all here today. A wise spirit named Mufasa once said, remember who you are, Simba. Don't be afraid to show the world who you are. Maybe it's the way you make people laugh. Maybe it's the way you inspire. Maybe it's your ability to spark joy at every glory hole you visit. But just remember to be you and always keep your currency in check, quirks and all. Congratulations, grads. You made it. Woo. So what you're loud, so what you stutter, so what you have an exploding foot. Just take <laughs> life one step at a time. Um, so I, you know, um, first of all, they, they, there was the, the hair pick, the hair pick falling out was like, I guess they could, you couldn't edit around it because there's they a pick could have, there's not Because a pick. other people had little things that, that happened to them that they did edit out. I was going to say that. And um, and I will say this. So when we were when we were like when they, we were consulting like about doing the thing, they were really heavy on it needs to be funny but also really inspirational. They were like, we want this to be funny, but it also needs to have an air of an actual like inspiring speech to people. So that was the a lot of the notes we got. I will try to find my. Uh, I did a commencement speech uh, in twenty twenty one for. Mm -hmm. Verizon's um, Verizon did um, a commencement a commencement thing. It was me, um, uh, Alexander Rodriguez, and like one other person. And I will try my best. I do not promise, but I will try my best to find that speech and upload it to the Patreon. But it was a very it was a very I I turned that speech out, turned it. Um. Um, but you have you have some really funny parts here. I really I really love the the the, uh, the 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 poppers bit was really really funny. I thought. Thank you. Wait, are we, um, oh, I was first, right? I was first, right? Yeah, you were the you were the very first one. We were we were going in. I love order. going first. Do you do you do you ever feel qual? Are you do you ever feel weird about going first, middle, last? How do you feel? No, I I love going first. Um, sometimes going at the end of the show, depending on the show. Like if it's a stand up comedy show. Closing is really nice because you're the closer, but also you're performing while the checks are dropping. So it kind of depends on where you are. Yeah. Are you are you at are you at like a work the world where going last isn't that big of a deal because it's only an hour and a half into the show, or are you at Saliva Two Days of the Ritz where going last means it's like three o'clock in the morning? morning. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. 
Yeah. So it all depends on where. In this scenario, I don't think going last would be would be that that big of a deal to be honest. Or even in the beginning, I, I love opening up and setting the tone because if someone before you has a shit tone, you have to recover. You have to actually, if someone before you is bombing, when you go up, you have to acknowledge that they bombed for your set to do well. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So Shea Kool Aid goes up, um, and during Shea, Shea's speech is very sincere, but also very, very, very funny. She's very, she's a very good writer. She's a very, mm-hmm. very good writer. I, 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 whenever she writes, I'm like, I'm like, wow, that was very well written. I really enjoyed her, her, her references. There can be 99 people in the cafeteria, you know. Yeah, yeah. Shea, Shea was really good, and she was work. She worked like down to the, to, like to the wire to get it done. Like we were all, we all started painting to get ready, and Shea was still like writing hers out, but. Good job well done because it came out very great. And her look was really great. I loved her look. I want that fucking outfit. I, I was like, bitch, I want it's so cool. It looked great. It was my favorite look of the night. She got the she got to let it out in the ass. <laughs> Put some tassels back there. Um, Raja goes up. I really love I mean, you know, it, when when she was talking to Nikki Glazer, Glazer and Carson, it looked like Raj was gonna bomb, but Raj did a great job. I love when she said, "I'm aware of your presence." That's a really, that's a really, um, and I love that she had a list like one, two, three. It helped you follow along a lot better. And the way that she was moving her head and the way that she leaned into this character, I thought was very effective. It was very weird though when Raja said, uh, "They know, they know when you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. They know um, that you wear a size 15 shirt." Women, they cut to Shea Kool Aid. Did you notice that? No, when she I said didn't. they know you wear a size fifteen, you should women. They cut. <laughs> I didn't. Ca- I didn't clock that. Did Shay have a size fifteen shoe? You know the girl's big feet. Uh, no, Shay and I uh, have the same size. You know who the girls with the big feet are. When I, yeah, like your foot is tiny. Your foot. I have a big foot. Your foot's bigger. Yeah, than mine. but you asked. If you remember you, from a, a previous watchery, Monet mentioned how all of the girls had m- around the same uh, foot size, so they would all share su- shoes. Yeah, thank you, Jacob, because Bob um, only listens to himself speak. Um, but I, but you said you said that she have a. Sorry, what were you saying? I wasn't listening. <laughs> wait, wait, say it again. I wasn't listening. What was it? <laughs> you said a size fifteen. I said no. I don't have a size fifteen. She and I have the same. I, I I wear a size thirteen. Like a lot of these are size thirteen. Some are fourteen. Like it depends on the on the shoe. Honestly, but I wear thirteen. You don't. You don't want a thirteen. I do. All the every every open toed shoe you see here is a size thirteen. Every open toed shoe and any and any any a uh, suede shoe is thirteen. The plastic ones, the the, the pleather what ones. You are about to expose the rue girls with the biggest feet, and I would like you to continue. Well, I I think that the biggest foot I've run across on a rue girl is Brita Filter. Brita Filter is walking on boats. Like Brita Filter has it. Very, very. They're large. fifteen. The British like, is Britta fifteen. Is, yeah, and, and wide. Britta is like Britta's got a big Samoan foot. Oh, what size is Eureka? Latrice is a is a big foot too, Britta's but Latrice only wears those size loose side size. shoes. Uh, Eureka's probably, probably roughly the same size. Uh, Shangela has a tiny. I just posted a, t- a TikTok of me and Shangela with her fucking. T- Shangela is teeny weeny. Anyway, oh, it's tiny, it's tiny lady. On. Um, Jada Essence Hall is always funnier than I remember her being. If that makes any sense, I'm always like, "Oh yeah, that's right, she's really funny." Yeah, because I think when I think Jada acknowledges that her stuff isn't going as planned, and as it's like melting down, she just kind of leans into it. Like with Prince, like Prince was kind of like not going well, so she's like, "I'm just gonna lean into it being bad." Her speech wasn't going, I think, as well as she had planned. She kind of leaned into that, which makes it funny because, like, it makes her, it makes you feel like she's in on it, like she's not sitting there, like, thinking, like, "Oh, bitch, I'm the best. I'm the belle of the ball. Y'all hoes can't touch me." She's in, she's in on the joke of herself. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Evie oddly really committed from stumbling to the very beginning, throwing her papers everywhere. I gagged. <laughs> the very. I gagged. You I, that was gonna happen? I did not know that was gonna happen, and I was like, "Oh shit, this bitch!" She's. I was I, as she fell. I was like, with literally the thought in my head, I was like, "I hope she numbered those," because the literally her cards went everywhere. They like went under the fucking thing. I was like, "This is gonna be a mess." They got to stop. Cameras got to stop. Get her cameras. I was like, "This is crazy." Cards. Like, did she have extra cards or something? Like, how did she get them back together? Evie did not read. Evie was doing it from from the dome. They had nothing on her cards. Evie was going it all from from off of her off of her head. That is very impressive. She did that it is, all on the dome. She was giving a, a oh extemporaneous uh uh realness. Yeah, girl. Evie Evie was Evie's very smart. 
I like the angle of her speech. You know, people don't talk about failing enough, in my opinion. I think she's and the like. If I, I, I would have never known how good I was at lip syncing if I didn't know how bad I was at impersonating Whoopi Goldberg. That's a very, <laughs> it's very it funny, funny. It is very real. Um, and I, I thought it was just a great. And what, what was the uh, the story behind her her robe? Uh, she just came with a white robe, and we all just she was like she like drew a bunch of stuff on it. She was like, "Can y'all all sign it and draw whatever you want on it?" Literally, we all drew stuff on there. Yeah, I want that. Like, I want to see that robe. Like, that's that's good. That's like an iconic robe. I mean, people pay a lot of money to to like meet y'all and get signatures and stuff. And she has every the entire cast. This, is that this might be the only thing that the entire cast has signed? Right? Maybe. I think she also like she drew something. She drew like a big dick on it or something. It, it, I may be making that up. I think like she drew something really vulgar on it. If I'm if I remember correctly. Anyway, Evie's also a really great. Have you ever seen her painting that she does? Oh, Evie's great. Evie's all all around. I love Evie. I love Evelyn. I want Audrey. one of those paintings. She's probably too busy to be making extra paintings, but I really would like one. <laughs> yeah, she ain't got time for you, bitch. Wow. Okay, um, and there's this I, clip of Civic Watchery. I think it was season 13. I, I Someone please tag it or BTDQ B videos. It's me. Some I was on tour somewhere, and Bob, we were doing the, I think it was the season 13 cast reveal. And I said something about some. I was like, what about this person? Bob goes, okay. It was so, you were being so aggressive and wild. I was probably doing a bit, Mona. No, you were not. It was real. Oh, so now you know my now you know me more than yes. I know you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, let's go on to Jinx One soon. I I don't I don't understand why she decided to do the witch bit if she wasn't going to do the witch bit. Like she she didn't really she like had like a little bit of maybe they I don't know if they edited it down but it was like she acted like she's going to do this witch bit but she barely did. It was mostly about the getting run over by the car. It, but it was at the beginning of her. She did like the whole double double foil in trouble hecate hecate hecate. That's the witch stuff. And I think I know it just seemed like a. It seemed like a throwaway, whereas like Evie, sorry, whereas Raja and the Viv, they're Committed. they're like thematic. Well, it was really throughout the entire yeah. thing. She True. did at the end call RuPaul the Grand Priestess or something, but it it just feels like it feels like this the speech would have been just as strong, if not stronger, if she didn't waste the time with those witch jokes in the beginning. Yeah. True, but I think, but also at that point, you like want to put in as much stuff as you think will be funny and will land, even though it's not, you know. I think she wanted to get as many jokes in as she could. Yeah. I did enjoy the way that she called back to getting hit by the car. It was really, it was very, very smart. It was very, very smart the way that she called back to getting hit by a car. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I like that. Uh, again, to your point, I, even though she didn't do it a bit throughout, at least she started with the witch thing and ended with it to have made it like she bookended it, you know, so it, it seemed like it was. And also she was dressed like a witch. She had the witch the, what you call that? Yeah. A witch's hat, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the yeah. name of it was called. Yeah. And then last but Is there a name for a witch's hat? No. I no. I was gonna call it a graduation cap. I was gonna try to do some witch graduation cap hybrid, but I don't think there is one. What do you call a sorting hat? A witch's a witch's hat. It's not gonna be a joke. No, there's no name for them. All right. Um, Last but not Viv, least, the Vivian who, uh, is is wearing. She's wearing one shoe. Her lipstick is smudged, but her makeup is still quite stunning. Um, Always stumbling to the stage, and um, she like uh, I love that she. You notice know, at the beginning she took her card and she threw it, and the card flew up and it landed right back on the podium. I know she didn't intend that, but that was crazy. No. Yeah, she take the card. She was like throwing her cards, and she threw the card up, and it flew up, and it came right back to the podium. That and no one mentioned it. No one laughed at I it. I didn't see no that. No one talked about it. It was it was the first card she threw. It was really really cool. Whoa, I didn't. Even and also, that. her nipples hanging out the entire performance. Her, the entire performance, her nipples out. It was all intentional. I I love this character. I think again, Viv is a good actress, and she's a good a, a good actor. And I, I thought this was really brilliant. To me, to my opinion, it was my favorite of the night. I thought she fucking, I thought Viv nailed it. I thought it was very, very good. I agree. I would have given the win to Viv and Raja over Viv and Jinx, only because I don't think Jinx theme, 
she didn't pull the theme through enough. Yeah. I also liked Raja's runway more than I liked Jinx's. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. How long did the Viv stay on the ground? I mean, I don't after right after her, it was done. So, I mean, not that long. I like, kind of want her. I kind of like the idea of her being there during the runway. Like if y'all were <laughs> stepping over her body, or at least get, or at least got like a, like a, a body double, so the audience at home would think that shit. It. That shit would have been so fucking funny. Yeah. Um. All right, let's go on to, so we end up finding out that the winner of this week's episode, um, the winners, shall I say, of this week's episode are, are Raja and Jinx Wait, Monsoon. Wait, you didn't, you didn't do the, the, the runways yet? Oh, shit, my bad, sorry. Wow. I mean, I don't, I don't take notes on the runway because I just look at them, but I never take notes. You're right. Um, let's go to RuPaul's look. We don't have the bottom half of the look in the picture, but I remember it. Uh, this is a cool look. Remember. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it looks cool, though. This hair is giving me very like blown. Like there's a fan. It's like this, the person styled the wig. That's like okay, get the fan. I just put a fan in it and just blew the hair this way. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And and I'm looking at all y'all's outfits too. We're gonna do a quick overview of the outfits from the uh, commencement speech. Did you like what Trinity ended up making? Yeah, I, I think it looked really good, especially because that she made it there. I, I had no clue that I, I thought she was sewing for something that I don't know what the hell she was sewing, but it looks really cool. I think my favorite cap and gown is probably my favorite look is probably uh, Shay's. Shay's so but I will good. say that Shay's is I will say though it is giving it is giving the least graduation. I think it's ceremony. graduation editorial. I love it. I think it's it's my favorite. She, to me, she's like it's like if like fucking Nia Long was playing a professor in a movie. This is the outfit they this is the outfit they put her in. You know what I mean? No, I, again, she, it's my favorite look. But I feel like out of context, I would never think that this had anything to do with graduation. Every other look. I, it was except Raja's. Every other look, I'd be like, "Oh, this person's giving a graduation speech." But if I saw Shay's completely out of context, I'd be like, wow, "It's a really nice garment," you know? Yeah, I love it. Um, let's go into the looks. Veiled it, veils, 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 veils on the runway. I feel like your look was controversial. Wait, okay, so wait, was the veil the the red thing or was the veil the cage? It was both. Like I was, it was meant to be like this because you know when you put a bird to sleep, you put this thing over the. You have to you have to cover the bird for birds to fall asleep. So yeah. I, I, I I wish I would have kept it on longer, maybe to sell that part of it. I took it off right at the top, so I feel like maybe I would have kept it on towards the end of the runway, then boom, and then finish. Would have made more sense, but the cage. Uh, the cage and the veil was supposed to were, were supposed to be both actors. The cage and the cover were both supposed to be the veil in my outfit, and it was very, very. So RuPaul loved it when I came out. RuPaul was RuPaul was living. But well, this look is really good. It's, 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 it seems like it's a nod to uh, Birds of Prey, the Alexander McQueen collection. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't I don't know a lot of fashion references. It's like the one of the few that I do know. And I love this. I don't think I, I feel like this outfit is better than the veil. I wish that it also I, I think what I wish was that the veil you had the 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 thing you put over the cage matched the fabric more. It well, it matched the it matched the peach that's in the feathers. Yeah, I can see that. Um Shea Coulee, this is all is this like another like 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 Hulk couture fashion piece from like a runway or something? I think so. Like it was, yeah. It, it is. It is from a designer. It is, she she got this from a designer for the show. Yes. Yeah. It looks really. It looks really cool. It, it's, it's it's like a gardening. She said it was like inspired by the, the idea was like her grandmother was gardening. Um, it looks really cool. This is a very no, very cool piece. No, 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 no. The the designer grandmother is a gardener. The designer is like this Asian designer. And that's what it was. It was Shea, Shea. I mean, well, Shay did say on the runway that it, that it was inspired. That the idea of this was that her grandmother would would uh, garden with this veil on, with a veil on. She didn't say she'd garden like this. Are you sure? Shikula Instagram says Sundays are meant for self care, so I waited to post this photo until today. Um, after church, we'd go over to my grandparents, and without fail, my grandmother would change out of her Sunday best into her gardening clothes. Um, Saturday, her focus was the laborious produce she right. grew: collard oh, yeah. greens, cucumbers, tomato squash. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't come from a gardener you watch, family. Do you watch the show, Tamar? I don't come from a gardener family. No one in my family gardens. My family is not the gardening. You mean y'all didn't have a little plot in Brooklyn? Y'all didn't have a little, a little. Y'all didn't have a little plot in, in um, in, in, in the concrete in Brooklyn. We did not, unfortunately. So what I hear did, did, also, folks would be eating fruits and vegetables grown in New York City. Y'all got to be crazy. I would, bitch. I would eat the fruits grown on a rooftop in Manhattan, bitch. 
you got to be crazy as you sip from your fucking Starbucks cup. Yeah, but like, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but these these yeah. these these fruits and vegetables grown in the in, in, in this nice soil that people tend to every day. Nice I soil. That. What nice soil in Brooklyn? Bob, there is, there is, you 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 have to go to no. the store and get soil and fertilizer. You, you they're not they're not they're not oh, going. They're not how going you know? By, you said there's no gardens in your family. You said not, there's no gardens. How you they're know, not, bitch? They're not going with shows you know? and buckets by the Hudson River and getting the fucking dirt by the Hudson River. Are they going to the Home Depot? I don't know that. Or the Lowe's? But I don't know that. I can't with you. That, that is honestly that's one of the craziest things Bob's ever said. I'm like I I don't know how y'all eat fruits and vegetables growing in New York. Meanwhile, no. Uh, uh, Crunch Wrap Supreme. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, this, this cow wasn't raised in uh in the Heights. Yeah, it, it it was raised in a damn cage in fucking Columbus, Georgia, under the under the jail. There are no cows in Columbus, Georgia. That is Columbus not It's not a farm town. There has to be. A, I, I, I guarantee you, there's at least one. There's at least one cow in Columbus, Georgia. I would bet my bottom. You don't know that. You're assuming. <laughs> you don't You're know assuming. there isn't. You're assuming there isn't. I no, I have more, I have context. <laughs> I live there, you know, actually there was a famous cow in Columbus, Georgia named Katie. Do you know that? Oh, so so, so what about Katie? What about her friends but, and her family? But Katie it was a uh, a Kate so Kenneth Dairies. There actually there was a dairy in Columbus, Georgia, a very famous dairy called Kenneth Dairies in Columbus, Georgia. Um and it was uh if you go to Columbus, Georgia now where the Best Buy is, that's where the Kenneth Dairies used to be. And there was this massive cow, a huge like cow statue outside that everyone loved. They can named it Katie for Kenneth Darius. Katie. Um, well, when they closed Kenneth Darius, they put the Best Buy up there. Everyone was so sad to see Katie gone. They actually brought Katie back. Put She's now in front of the Best Buy. And then there's a little thing called um, BB. There's a tiny cow named BB for Best Buy. So Katie and BB are in front of the Best Buy in Columbus, Georgia. If you want to know a little, a little bit of history. For Columbus, Georgia. So there are at least two cows that we know live in Columbus. Well, that's the list. There are cows in Columbus. There was there was a whole dairy there named Kennedy. The Kennedy is gone. I don't know what happened to all the cows. Anyway, moving on. Trinity the Tuck. I absolutely love this look. This look is so impeccable. It is. She looks very good in red. Yeah. And, and I, I also like her with dark hair. I think I prefer Ken, uh, Trinity with dark hair. This wig, bitch. When do you, when they do like the closest of her? That thing was coming from her fucking scalp, okay? This wig was so stunning. Yeah, this looks really good. She better work. I love this veil. It is that it, honestly, this is the best veil on the runway. I'm just gonna go yeah. ahead and call it now. This was this look is so it was very good. good. It is amazing. It really is. It was really good. Um You wanna talk about Raja? Yeah, Raja. First of all, I love how Raja takes these loose side heels. Raja has so many like run of the mill loose side heels. She, she transforms them into these amazing shoes. Her shoes, I love how she matches. Describe what a loose side heel is for our listeners who may not know. A loose side heel. If you have ever seen any drag queen, uh, oh not any drag queen, they're these like clear pleaser shoes, and they are translucent. They're with, with a platform. They're translucent in the heel, and in the platform, and they have a a, a translucent, um, not plastic. Yeah, it is plastic plastic front on top of it uh, where you like a like a like a like like a peep toe they sell them in peep toe sling back and a lot of drag queens wear them because they're very universal you can throw some stones on it you can paint them whatever and you have a brand new heel or you just keep them neutral and you can wear them with anything which is what lady bunny does a lot lady gaga is famous for wearing loose side heels because she gets the really tall ones it'd be comfy um but yeah this look she she's on the cover of a magazine i think it looks really really cool um, I love the dress. Uh, I've never seen anything like this on the runway before. Yeah, her having the magazine, but yeah, that, that was that was really smart. It looks really cool. Yeah, uh, it's a really cool look. I was going to Jade Essence Hall. Hall. I don't think I understand what's going on here. I don't get it. I did, did it not really like in this person. Look. No, it looked just like this, and I genuinely didn't get it because, like, she, I, yes, it's veil, but you're completely covered. Like, you can't see. Like it, it, this could be Jasmine Matzo's under there from from the from the Christmas special. We don't know who's under this thing. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It's it's it's, it's I don't I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I'm not. It's, it's not. It's, and Jada has had some amazing looks. It's not one of my faves of hers. Let's go to Evelyn. Evelyn Oddly. Evelyn Evelyn stoned this. She made and stoned this look. 
with herself and her roommates and stuff. Like this was, and it was really this. The pictures or videos don't do it justice. It was fully stoned. Like from every inch of that thing was stoned. It looked amazing in person. Work. It looks really sparkly. She looks like the fiercest girl at Burning Man. Like it's giving. <laughs> uh, it's giving. I'm the richest girl at Burning Man. I do this. I just this. I, I, once I leave Burning Man, I actually go back to my house in Beverly Hills. Right. But I do love to slum it up with you idiots here at Burning Man. Once, right. <laughs> once a year. Um, let's go on to uh, Jinx Monsoon. I really like the concept for the veil, but like I'm kind of getting like this silhouette is starting to drive me crazy. Yeah, this silhouette is starting to drive me a little bit crazy. Yeah, she does this silhouette a lot, and I, I again I see where she was going with the with like it's what's like the butterflies are placing it on her, but the way that she, I try to remember how much she walked. Like it should have been a reverse to make it make sense. But why? I'm trying to think. There was something when I watched it. What am I thinking about? Wait, hold on. Because the butterfly, I assume the butterflies just are just flying behind her. They're not pulling her. Right. So if so, so so the back piece is supposed to be the veil, right? So they should. So it's a, like it's two part. There, there's two parts to the veil. The veil in the front, and there's also holding up the back the back part of the veil too. But is that how veils work? It would be the one veil that's in the front, and they would be pl- put, pulling it back. You see what I'm saying? Not all veils. Some veils have veils, some veils have multiple layers. Mm. Work. Um, when you get married, will you wear a veil? Absolutely not. Why? I don't really feel a need for it. No one is. I'm not. I'm not revealing myself. No one is giving me away. I don't. I don't. I don't, well, I don't understand the purpose of a veil in real. In real, like, cause oh, because the bride is supposed to be like a secret from the groom. The groom is not supposed to have seen the bride until the thing. I'm not into that, bitch. We we, we probably fucked last night. So, oh my God. Um, in the one about weddings, you said your ideal wedding dress was the the wedding dress from the parent trap with the top hat and the veil. Is that no longer the case? <laughs> I don't remember this. I have to look this up now. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, so, um, and then the Vivian. Oh, um, okay, okay. We're real cool. like let, me, let me let me let me rebut Jacob. I do like the top of the veil, but the way that they styled it, the veil was all the way back on the top hat. It wasn't covering her face, so that's what I bet. Work. Um, I don't like the Viv's look. I was gonna be blunt. I don't understand I how wish the veil the, works. I wish that the belts were a different color than the dress. They stood out more. Um, I also feel like we. we I don't think that everything on Rowan needs to be completely original, but it, it, it's, a, it, it's a little bit indicative of the uh, uh, Manila Luzon's bondage look on the runway, which was just so good. So because it makes my mind instantly think of that, where she was a bunny with a carrot in her mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, the gag was like, it was a carrot gag. It was really good. So I, I don't love this look, but I, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, um, I agree. So the winners of this week's challenge are Raja and Jinx Monsoon. They do they do better in <laughs> I don't think you'd ever see Raja or Jinx Monsoon sing this song at any point in time. And if you were to pause at 58 minutes and 50 seconds to get y'all's response after the lip sync, I want you to tell me more about how y'all were reacting to it there in, in real time. Because it was no shade. I love Jinx, love Raj. It was not a good lip sync. Raja didn't really know the words. And Jinx is just not a good lip syncer. And it was just, it really was a little painful to watch. No shade. Love the ladies. And they know this too. Like we all kiki and cackled about it. It was not a great lip sync. Well, um, first of all, like. That's why. That's why we. Cl- that's why we. Cl- when when the lipstick is done and we all they say this over, all of us are like. <laughs> um, Jinx's shoes. Y'all, y'all should have applied the same acting y'all did. When, y'all should have used that same acting y'all did when RuPaul walked into that outfit. Y'all should have brought some of that back. Um, <laughs> maybe you could afford it your sisters. This that same courtesy. Um, <laughs> no, it was not. A, it was not a good lip sync. Cheeks in her. <laughs> this I didn't oh, like. Oh, this is winding of the big dick energy line. Yeah, and also, but and uh, no shade, bitch. Put on a heel. 
or put on a like what is this what is this combat boot oh i hate these shoes i hate jinx's shoes so much these are the shoes that jinx wears during the day these right these are jinx's day shoes i recognize these shoes yeah and then like those tights and the thing on it it's just a lot of stuff and also knowing that evie was there evie's look for this lip sync because she thought she was going to believe lip syncing it was going to be amazing it was going to be such a good lip sync to see evie do this song also, I wrote down Evie actually does the best lip sync during this thing because Evie's if it keeps flashing over to Evie and she's doing she's doing a better lip sync from the chair. Yeah, it was a wild girl. We were sitting there like, not this. And again, if y'all want to see the the, the 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 queens who um who were safe that week reacting, if you're watching on Paramount Plus, fifty eight minutes and fifty seconds, pause. Specifically, Monet. It is very funny. <laughs> and then we go back to uh uh the Viv's quote from earlier. She won't get a chance to block me. Cut to. Cut to. Jinx saunters over to Viv in her very comfortable um, (laughs) Nine West boots (laughs) and hands the platinum plunger to the Viv and says, I hope you take this as the compliment it is. Yeah. Yeah, Vivian was tight. She was upset. Vivian is not joking. She's upset. I didn't know about tight until I moved to New York City. Tight means mad. You getting me? What is it? Your favorite line? Hey, yo, son, you making me mad tight right now. Um, I think I told this earlier on the podcast before. Yeah, we don't need to Mo. hear it again. We got it. Hi. Oh my God. I was listening to our most recent episode of the podcast, which is the one where Monet's like, I took a shit. I'm in a good mood. I am open minded. I was re listening to that. And honestly i stand by what i'm about to say I do, do you it. do you have you had any revelations no, no. you still the no, same old I stand, by. I stand by what i said 10 out of 10 would do again i listened to it again too and i was like i was like bob is wild i was like sometimes bob would literally just be choosing days to just be you just you actively like you get a menu for the day you're like happy content uh, w- bitch, I'm just gonna be a bitch today. Like, shut up! No, it was. Oh, you know what it was? It was, it was this. It was this, and I hate this. <laughs> I don't care wh- how the questions asked. It's never a good question. <laughs> Are you tired? That's never. I hate. That's that is a that is a question that is a. You feeling bad? You kind of you, you're tired. No. Are you tired? Yeah. Okay. Out of context. Yes. I'm talking for me. I'm not talking about for you. I'm talking about for <laughs> me. But out the of question, co- are you tired? Never feels good. But out of context, yes. Bob, we were in day three or four of our rehearsals. We're rehearsing for eight hours straight every day. So me saying to you, girl, are you tired? I'm like, I'm not. And bitch, say you're tired. Instead, say, I'm tired. Don't ask me, I bitch. I can't. Lean in. Were you, were you tired? <laughs> I was a little tired, Yes. Then you should have said it. Say I'm tired. <laughs> no, like we, this, we, we, we literally are in, entangled in so much of our lives together. Me saying to you after the fourth day of rehearsing eight hours straight, be like, "Girl, you tired?" That's not that's not a loaded question, bitch. It's fully unloaded, actually. All I'm doing is telling you the communication I like. I would have preferred. <laughs> oh, I am tired. Okay, well, all I'm doing is just telling you this is called setting healthy boundaries. <laughs> you, I'm just telling you boundary interactions my fucking I like. dick. Bounder my dick onto your nose. I, I like. It, it, like we'll do it. We'll do a day we're here, and the days are long, and I know the days are long. But the last thing I want is someone at the end of the day being like, "You're tired. Get <laughs> the fuck." Out of my face. <laughs> Leave. Well, well girl, I, I will never forget. <laughs> the day we got shut down in Spartanburg, season one, we got we we, we were at Spartanburg and we got sent home. Um, I was not feeling well. I had COVID. But it was right. very early. There were no COVID. There were this is so early, this is so early they didn't even have a COVID test. And I guess word had gotten around that I was not well, but I didn't have a test. And Eureka walks up to me in front of everyone and goes, not feeling so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Not feeling so good, girl. You know, I don't know. Eureka, Eureka uh, answers questions for you while she's asking them. So she's nodding her head, yes, going, not feeling so good, feeling bad, <laughs> feeling bad. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. She wasn't lying. It doesn't matter if she's, it doesn't matter how tired I am. I do not like the question. You tired? We, we were at this show where uh where where this guy came. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 
What? Do you got that framed? You should I, get it framed. I am gonna get it framed. I'm gonna get it framed. I have I I have some signed pictures in my home of my of Queen. I have Trixie, uh, Layla, Kim, Naomi, and you. And I and wow. I have. Wow. I bought a hat and a shirt. I don't know where the picture is. If I need to get a frame, I can put it in my room. Uh, oh, and I have Valentina. I have a Valentina one too. I don't know where it is. Valentina gave this to me. I forgot. Oh, we were uh, uh, <laughs> when we were filming All Stars. She just had it her thing, and she was like, "Mi amor, this is for you." And she just signed this, and I was like, "Valentina, what the fuck?" <laughs> Well, mine was a picture that a fan brought her. It was just a, pic- a fan bought her a picture of herself. Just bought her, bought Valentina a picture of herself and just gave it to her, which is a very weird gift. So it's not actually, it's another model. And they photoshopped Valentina's face onto a, like, a, a model. Like, there was like a cis woman model. And the fan photoshopped Valentina's face onto a different body and then gave Valentina the photo. Oh. I didn't realize that. Well, anyway, so they get we get the um. So I have a picture of Valentina that was they used to sit in my kitchen. It was always it was a framed picture of Valentina that was always sit in my kitchen. It's in storage now. I got I got I got to un, un, unbox my Valentina picture. One of my favorite, one of my favorite Valentina stories is when she got cast on Rent. And she was just walking around to everyone who worked the world oh. and giving them a hairpin. You know, what? in fact, <laughs> we will tell you all the story. It, we we're gonna leave. We will tell the story on the Patreon. All right, bye everyone. <laughs>